This is what we're going to build today. It's a sled, kind of a modified toboggan, uh, you know, for your kids or actually, you know, a grown person could ride down the hill on it. It's made out of oak. You could also make it out of two by sixes. Uh, I just happen to have some oak laying around, so that's what I made it out of. If I hadn't had those, I probably would have used like some uh, two by sixes and maybe two by fours um, in, on the inside. Uh, this is a plastic barrel that was cut and uh, made for the bottom. Got some rope handles here, uh, some stainless steel screws to hold the uh, plastic on, and a rope here to pull it. All right, let's get started. First, we've got to lay out the rails, and I've got a piece of six inch wide, uh, four foot long oak, and the uh, we're gonna do we're gonna lay out the front curve with a French curve, and I'm just holding it flat here and up here against the top, and it's gonna run into nothing in the front right here. So we're, we're up against it here and here. And then we'll just draw that curve. All right, now on the back, we want a little bit of a relief, a little flip on the back. So we're gonna come out six inches. Up a half inch. and draw that line. Okay, let's get this cut out. Now I want the curve on these to be exactly the same. So what I'm gonna do is I've got them in the vise clamped and I'm gonna run the, a belt sander over them until, they're, until they match up. I think that's pretty much got it. All right, I've cut the back, and it's just the, uh, this is the you know it's it's uh, beveled off here. This is the bottom of the back, and I put a four degree bevel on here to match that. This is fourteen and a half inches long, and I'm going to get it screwed in place. I've got these screws that are uh, it says it's for hardwood and MDF. I've never really used them before, and. Uh, it says there are no splitting, so we're going to give them a try. It also says indoor use, so we'll see how we do here. Well, I need to somehow hold it. Tell you what, let me get some clamps on here. Okay, I got a clamp down here on the bottom to kind of help hold that. Get one across the top. All right, let's try that. Son of a gun. It did do a good job. Didn't split it. There we go. Pulled it nice and tight. You know what? I want to put I want to put some glue on there, so let me get some glue. Alright, so back the screw out. Put a little waterproof glue in here. I'm liking these screws. I think what they do is they kind of drill. I don't know if you can see that. They kind of drill out the point. Drills it out with that point and then the, the threads catch. And that's how it keeps from splitting it. Okay, we've still got the sled upside down. Uh, this is the front of it. 
and I want to put a piece at the very front like this to help strengthen that front edge, you know, for like when they run into trees. And then I want to put a couple of stretchers along the inside, uh, one here and one halfway, halfway back. So what I want, I want these to be, uh, in other words, these are going to sit down in the bottom. So I want the upper edge on, to be nice and curved because you're going to be sitting on it. So I'm going to take a round over bit and hit these edges. And then on the front, I'm going to hit this edge and this edge right here. So when you're on the inside, it's nice and rounded right there. This edge, I'm going to leave it crisp for the, uh, the plastic to come around. All right, so here's our pieces after rounding them over. This is for the front edge. It's rounded on both sides. And then these are to go down there into the floor. And, you know, I just rounded them over with a, uh, a, a 3 8 round over bit. All right, so let's go ahead and get this front piece in. All right, let's cut that, the front in there. Let's flip it over, and we'll put these bottom rails in here. The first one I'm going to put right behind where the bevel starts coming down, or the slant, or whatever that thing is. Let's see, I better measure that off the back. All right, so I'm putting the back edge of it at 36 and a half. These boards are two inches wide. Let me make it easier on myself and mark that. All right, so let's put one more. Let's put it at uh, 18. These are two inches wide, so I'm going to put a mark at 17. Alright, that's got our frame built. Okay, I gotta drill the holes out for the ropes. And they go 14 inches and 19 inches is where the holes go from the end and also from the front. There's another set in the front and they go 14 and 19. And then an inch and a half off of this side. And I've clamped a board up underneath here so I don't get tear out on the bottom. All right, that's got those two. I just got to do four more. All right, the rope for the front pull goes two and a half inches by inch and a half. All right, I got to do the other side. Now I want to uh, round over these edges uh, so that they're not as sharp when you're grabbing onto them. So I've got a quarter inch round over bit and I'm going to run that around the edge. All right, that's got all the sharp corners knocked off. Uh, this is where the plastic is going to go, so I want that to be at a right angle. But uh, the edges have a nice, nice uh, curve to them now. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is get it sanded and then start putting on the polyurethane. All right, I'm going to brand my mark into the corner well I missed that part right there unfortunately
turn around and try it on this side. Yeah, that did better. There it is after a quick sanding and then I blew it out with an air gun. If you want to see how I uh, made the branding iron, I've got a video out there showing how, um, how I made it. Alright, let's get a coat of finish on here. Alright, we're going to get a coat of polyurethane on here and I'm just using uh, Minwax uh, Clear Gloss Polyurethane. This is our 55 gallon drum and we're going to use this for the bottom of a sled of the sled and this center section from this rib to this rib right here is 13 inches so we got to go I want to have it a little bit too wide then I'm going to trim it down so um, I'm going to go two inches below and I've set this up you know it's kind of hard to get an even line around something so this is the way I'm going to do it is when I do this it gets me nine inches off the bottom and so that's that's right for uh, two inches below this line so all right that's got our two lines drawn and this will actually give me I'll have this left that I could use as a feed trough or something and uh, the bottom part I could also use to uh, feed animals out of, or you could also probably ride down the hill on some ice and snow with it too. Okay, I'm going to get a, uh, a jigsaw and cut these lines out. You could lay this on your, on your table saw and put this edge against the fence and just spin it, but uh, this, it's got some liquid in it, and according to the label here, it says it's black raspberry syrup, so I don't really want to get that all down in my uh, table saw. So I'm going to uh, put down some, uh, let's see, you know, I think I'm going to take this outside and cut it open. All right, we're out on the back porch. <laughs> it just started raining, so uh, I'm going to try to do it right here on the edge and let this uh, junk run out there. So anyway, all right, let's see how this goes. Like, looks like somebody got murdered. Okay, I'm going to rinse this out and then I'll cut the other half off. Alright, so this has got it cut off. And I cut, uh, there was a, a seam line that you could visually see, and I used that as a guide to cut it in half, like this. So, um, let's get that put on the slide. I got the. Uh, murder scene all cleaned up out there. Uh, I'm really glad I decided to do this outside because uh, that raspberry syrup, there's, I rinsed this off and you can still smell it. Kind of makes you want a snow cone. All right, so we're gonna get this put on here and I put a, uh, a one by four underneath this front part just to raise it up so that when I set this down, I've got some overhang on this end right here. And so I think, you know, I've never done this before. So I'm thinking the smartest thing to do it's, I've got a, about a half inch overhang, so what I'm going to do, I think, is kind of get right in the middle and I'm going to overhang this a half inch and I'm going to put a screw and then I'm going to get one side done. Okay, so... So, here we go. Just to get this first one. So if I overhang a half inch, I'm going to go a half inch in plus three eighths, which will be, should be right where my screw should go. Alright, that looks pretty good. So now if I do that same thing, yeah, so I think if I get this, I'm going to get this side done, 
and then I'll work on doing the other side. All right, what I'm using is um, number 10. Well, if it'll focus on it. Yeah, number 10 by one inch stainless steel truss screws. And these came from, uh, they've got a truss head, which just means that the head is, I'm oh, sorry, the head's rounded over, but it's it's shorter. It doesn't stick up real high. And now I'm hoping it'll help it to glide down through the snow. Uh, and these came from McMaster Car. All right, so to make life a little easier for myself, I'm gonna, I got a caliper, a little caliper. Boy, this stuff's slippery. And I'm going to set it to, let's see, seven eighths. Is that right? Okay, so half, half an inch for the plastic and then three eighths for half of the, the oak underneath. So that'll be seven eighths. So then when I come here and I put this a half inch like that, then I should be able to come here and just make a little line and then I'll have to measure that every time and then I got this quick connect for my drill so I can just pop the drill bit in and then pop in the, the uh, Phillips bit to make that a little bit faster and I'm going to put these every six inches along the length All right, we'll take a heat gun and heat this, and I'm hoping it's going to get pliable enough that I can get it to bend up and stay there. I'm just working this heat gun back and forth, and I can feel the tension getting a little less and less each time, so it's let, letting it bend a little bit. You don't want to get too close or get it too hot. All right, I think that's got it all screwed down. The next thing I'm going to do is get a router. And I'm going to trim trim this plastic off uh, to match the edge. All right, I'm just using a laminate trim bit in my router. And I'm going to trim this off. I'm going to have a little bit of trouble because i got to bounce over these screws. But I think it's going to be all right. Got a few burrs around here where the the plastic's just looks kind of frayed where that bit hit it. So I'm just going to round this over. Also, make sure I don't think there's any sharp edges, but I just want to make sure there's. No All right, we got the bottom in it, and now I need to get the ropes put on. And I'm trying to figure out how long I want to make these rope, but I got you know the holes were drilled, and so now. Just going to take these 
kind of do a sample here because I need I need four of them. I'm gonna put the knots on the outside so they're not pressing up against you. It needs to be about like 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 that. All right, so let's see if I can get this knot out of here. All right, now I want a knot that. <laughs> okay, hang on. So I need that much. All right, so I need about that much. So let's see how long. All right, so 22 inches, and my holes are five inches apart. So I need 22 inches. I need four of them that are 22 inches long. So let me get that cut. Shove that out of the way for a second. All right, so 22 inches. I'm gonna cut this with some tin snips, I think. Yep, that worked pretty good. Take a torch and burn these ends so they don't fray. Right after you burn them, that plastic will burn and stick to you, so be careful with that. Alright, so I think that'll be pretty good. Alright, so I'm going to get the other three done. Alright, that's got it uh, pretty much finished. The last thing I want to do is put a coat of wax on it. And I don't really know how important that is. But uh, I'm going to do it. And this is just some old turtle wax that I've had laying around forever. I'm sure there's somebody else out there on the internet that knows way more about this than I do. But... Ooh, gross. Okay. All right, well that sponge is uh, so old it's disintegrating. Let me go get a different one. All right, I got rid of that old funky sponge and got me a new one. So I'm gonna apply this. I'm just trying to make the bottom a little slicker. And like I said, there's probably somebody on the internet can tell you, give you a way better way to do this. All right, we'll let that dry and then come back and buff it off. All right, I think this is pretty much dry. There's a few spots that aren't quite, but go ahead and see if I can buff this up. Oh yeah, I think that'll, that's nice and slick. I got a great, my great uncle, his name was Alonzo. And if he were here, he's been dead several years, but if he was here, he would say one of two things. He would say that that's slicker than greased owl do. I don't know where that one came from. Or he would say that's slicker than a cat's butt. That's the one he almost always said. And, uh, and then he would go on to say, well, because you know, a cat's butt is really slick because all it does is sit around all day and lick it with that sandpaper tongue. So, <laughs> a little bit of uh, nostalgia there for you. Okay, so I think that's got it done. Got a, a uh, cord to pull it up the hill with, needs to hold on to, and you can put a couple kids in here and send them uh, downhill. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this project, hope you get a chance to build one, and uh, thank you for watching.